Hey folks, Jenny Dodanski here, Wormwise. Do my ewes need a drench before they see these guys? Well, in an ideal world, the answer to this would obviously be, of course not. Um, in the ideal world, our ewes would have weaned in great condition. Uh, they'd be holding or slightly gaining weight, just coming into mating, and they'd be going to go on to feed members of both good quality and good quantity um, and that would be feed that had low worm contamination on it. Um, in addition our ewes would have a genetic background that allowed them to withstand a bit of worm challenge anyway um, even if all of those aspects weren't perfect. But what if you can't tick all of those boxes? Should you just drench every ewe anyway? It doesn't matter. Um, if we drench every ewe on our farm in the autumn prior to putting the rams out We've then created a situation where for the next several weeks at least, um, any parasites coming through and developing out the back end of those ewes are going to be ones that have survived your drench treatment, so quite likely resistant parasites. If you graze your ewes and lambs in the same area to, to want to use the ewes as a source of refugia or to dilute out those parasites that might be surviving out the back of your lamb drenches, um, then once you use a drench, they're not a very good source of refugia anymore. Um, so that's the downside. But in some situations, leaving some ewes untreated, you know, could cost you at mating. So who are our priority ewes and, and what do we do? How do we identify them? So our two-tooth ewes, our young ewes and our very light ewes are the ones that are going to be most vulnerable. Two-tooth ewes because their immunity is not as substantial as a mixed age ewe and light ewes, even though um, all the work in New Zealand suggests that um, parasites aren't a major primary cause of light condition in ewes, because they are light, then they are going to be potentially more under pressure from parasites and could respond to being looked after a bit at mating. So there's those risk groups, but we could also do some monitoring. Um, Faecal egg counting in the weeks coming into mating, especially when it's combined with uh, larval cultures, is really, really useful. So Fecal egg counting, the mainline ewes, the tutus and the light ewes separately will often reveal differences between those groups anyway. The other really useful piece of information there is larval cultures. If you're in the northern part of New Zealand, uh, fears about barber's pole worm tend to dominate our decision making around treating ewes at mating time. If we've got larval culture information, and that would include from the lambs as well, um, in the weeks coming into mating, we'll then have some numbers around what percentage of barber's pole worms actually there in your sheep. So armed with all that information, um, then we can take the, the faecal egg counts, the larval cultures, into consideration with the condition of the sheep, the feed that they're going on to, the likely level of larval contamination of that feed and how the climate's looking uh, right now and going forward and then we can make a really good informed decision about whether or not we really need to treat ewes at mating time.